Alright, welcome to our used 2005 Tripoli Embassy A34 FXL. So we got all the storage part compartments all the way around the outside here. So you can see in here, we've got your awning rod as well as a water hose for you. As well as some little props and some triangle flares. So if you're looking to do some roadside service, you can get yourself safe and marked off for it. Right here, if we open that up, we've got your sewer hose here. So just pull, pull that out. As it stretches out, it is about 20 feet long. So just take note of those two ears and the adapter here. That's how we'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. Tucking it back away in its nice little holder there. Just keeps any sort of stench out of the unit. Ahead of that, we got this little port. So it will be locked with the 751 key. So on your ring of keys here, that's just this little round one here. Stick on into there, open it up, and reach in. And you can see you've got this one shore cord on a 30 amp end, all right, with the black wire. So that's gonna be for running the majority of your bus, as well as your one air conditioner in the front of the unit. In here, you've also got a second plug-in on a white wire, which is gonna be solely for running your rear air conditioner, which is mounted in the bedroom, all right? So if you're looking to run both ACs, you'll need to have this one plugged in as well as the black one, all right? We do provide you with a 15 amp adapter as well. So if you're looking to run in to plug in and charge your batteries or run your fridge, you can still take your normal cord here, bring it down to 15, plug into a standard household outlet, run your fridge and charge your batteries. Otherwise, standard 30 amp end, most campsites will have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. Straight up from there, you can see we've got your little gas for the location. So the same lock there, 751, you're gonna open it up, fill up as per usual. So that gas tank is feeding both the bus and your generator. Right down here, you've got your sewer system. So it pops on open. You can see you got your two valves here. So the one on the right is your gray water. The one on the left is your wastewater. So your wastewater is filled from your toilet. Gray water is filled from your sinks and your shower. So typically cleaner water than what your wastewater is going to be. So when you're dumping your tank, you're just going to pop this cap off. You're going to take your hose. And you see it's got the same ears that your hose had. So it'll be attached in the same way. Just press it on, turn it, locks into place. All right, and then you're going to pull the black valve like I said, that's your toilet. Drain that out completely, and once that's done, we'll go over to the gray valve, pull that last just to help keep that hose that little bit cleaner. Right up top here, so you got left and right little valves back there, so those are gonna be for pumping up your airbags in the bus. So if you're not happy with your ride quality, you can change that base with, the, with your air pressure, All right? So straight up towards the front here, you got these two. So you got your cable and satellite inlets here. You get a telephone jack as well as the cable and satellite inlet on the side. Straight up from there, you've got your outside shower. So the same 751 key again. It's going to stick into there, open her up. You get your hot and cold water with your shower head, which is on a little stand there. All right. You can also just pull it out, and it is about a three foot hose. Okay. Tucking it back away, just feeding it back up into its hole. Line up that little holder, tuck her back away, and lock her back up. Right beside that's your fresh water connection. So again, just that same lock. Right. So with this valve kind of turned to the right and in all the way, you can see it lines up with normal and city water. So that's be if you wanted to run off of your hose here, you'd take your water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water and that'll pressurize all of your water lines. With that same hook, hose hooked up to there, you can just loosen this valve, bring it out all the way so that it'll line up to your water tank fill and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. Now you can see with it not hooked up with the water valve there, it does just leak out. So you gotta be careful of which one you're using, right? But below that, we've got your furnace here. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just wanna make sure nothing's blocking that. It does get hot. Exhaust for your furnace for the vehicle as well as your generator right down there. A couple of storage bins in your slide out. Right? We come around the front so of course you've got access to your engine all that right here your batteries right in there this compartment here as we open it up just a little bit of storage there this compartment here i believe again just storage behind that we've got access to your propane tank all right so you're just going to pull this valve out 
right? So as you thread it in, that's it closed off. And then you bring it out to open it up. Right? So you can see the little arrows embossed right on it, open and close. You get the little gauge on the side here. Above from that, you got your GFI protected outlet here. So you do have your test and reset right at it out here. Vent for your fridge here, so nothing back there for you to worry about. And right here, you've got your hot water tank, so you just get this keyway here, just line that up, and you can pop it on open. Before you ever turn it on, whether it be with your electrical switch, which is right down here, or with propane, which is inside the unit, you just want to hit this relief valve right there, make sure that's all the water comes out. That bit of water coming out is just letting you know that that water tank is full and it's safe to fire it up. And once we get inside and we do fire it up on propane, I will go over a reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just right here, right? Towards the back of the unit, more storage here, a little bit more storage again, and storage again. Alright, so you just get this one little key here, slap her into there, one of these keys. it up so you got access to all that in there right and then in the back of the unit we just got the ladder so you can get up top check all of your seals and such and then the spare tire of course the unit does also have a hitch on it so if you're looking to tow something around you're prepped for that just closing up your hot water tank just line up that keyway now at your door, you just get this little T-latch there, so that's just going to slide into there, just hold the guy open. So you can see your steps shot out automatically, so as you reach in, you got that switch right there. Turn that switch off, that's going to let your steps stay wherever they're at, turn it on, and they're going to close with the door, open with the door. Right. Beside, to the left of that step switch, you get your porch light. Right. To the left to the right of that, you get your interior light in here. And then storage just lights up all of your storage compartments or sends power to all the lights in them at least. All right. So straight up from there, you've got your furnace thermostat right here. So the power button in the bottom there, slide that over to the right to turn it on. And then in your modes, typically it's going to start from off. You can just hit that mode and cycle through all your modes. So you can see fan only right now with your fan on high. Just hit this fan here and you can cycle through your different speeds. So you get your low, medium, high, and auto. So we're just going to leave that on high. Hit mode again, it'll come out of that fan speed, it'll come into cool. So you can select your temperature just with the up and down here. Right. And with that AC going, you basically got two different options. You can have this louver here open, in which case it's just dumping all of its air into the living room here. Or you can close it off and use all of the roof ducting to move our air. Right. So once we're done with the AC, just hit mode again come out of cool, come into furnace. Again, just selecting our temperature with the arrows there up and down. That'll turn off the air conditioner. It'll turn on the furnace. All right, you see your furnace is moving its air through all of its kind of portholes in the side there. You got a couple more throughout the trailer. All right, hit mode again, comes out of furnace, comes into heat strip. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually installed or not, but that'll basically just be an electric heater that's up in your air conditioner that's just going to be moving the air throughout like that. Uh, you're really better off just using your furnace rather than trying to run this heat strip. All right. Mode again, cycles back to off and just kind of runs back around. Uh, your zone down in the bottom here doesn't actually link up to anything. You've only got the one zone, so don't worry about that. All right above our heads here. Just get this one compartment so you can see in the bottom left here we've got your battery disconnect so press that button up uses the battery connects it right down to store will disconnect the battery from the system we're going to leave it hooked up right now though beside that we got your monitor system so you get your battery charge levels so because they're plugged in right now we're currently full as that goes down it'll go to good fair and poor your fresh water tanks as you fill that up we'll go to a quarter half third and then full same idea for your gray your black and then you also get the gauge for your propane tank as well right to the right of that, we've got your water pump switch. So turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh water tank. Beside that, we've got the generator. So you're just gonna press and hold the bottom of it for a couple of seconds. That just primes the generator, makes starting a little bit easier. And then press and hold the top and you'll hear it start. 
All right, and then just press and hold the bottom for it to turn back off. For turning on your water heater, you're just gonna turn on that switch right there. That little red light's gonna come on, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that light's gone out, the ignition sequence is started. Once that light's gone out, the ignition sequence is started. And if that light were to come back on afterward and stay on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, you'll be going out and using that reset button that we'd shown you. Right up top here, you've got your hydraulic room extension. So just sat here right now, it's not actually gonna do anything. You've gotta go up to your ignition here. We're gonna take the vehicle key, turn it up to your ignition spot, make sure that your parking brake is set, and then we can come to the slide out. Press and hold extend, and that slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, it'll just kind of stop in place. It is just a hydraulic slide, so you do got to just watch it. And that's that, right? You can see that keyed switch beside it there. That has been eliminated. That is no longer part of your slide out system. Right? So up front here, you just get the storage. Right? Also got your little chair here. So because it's got the seat belt, this is ocup ocup uh, occupiable while driving. Right in the front here, if you just pull that lever over to the left side, you can slide it in and out, right forward and back. And then on the right side, undo that latch by pushing it back and you can turn it around, all right? For this little guy here, if you just flip that back, pull up on that little table, folds out, and it does kind of meet this chair, all right? Flip that back down for your cup holders. Storing it back away, just flip it up, falls back in there. There you go. <laughs> Light right above it, just on its own little switch there. And then to the front of the unit, the TV, I'm not sure what it's actually hooked up to. And across the top though, you do have a whole bunch of satellite controls, your DVD, VHS player. Good Lord. A VHS player it's got. <laughs> <laughs> and remotes in here, as well as those uh, headphones. Sorry, I can't quite tell you what for exactly. This screen right here is your backup camera. All right, so that does display rather nicely. Now we've got pretty standard controls in here. So you got, of course, your vent controls, your stereo here, your generator. So that's if you were looking to turn it on with this switch here. I recommend doing it with the other one in the back there. Your radio, so you can turn that on. Map light turns on your little lights up above your heads here. Other than that, pretty straightforward. The battery boost connects your uh, house batteries to the vehicle batteries. So if your house batteries are charged, but the vehicle's gone down, you can't start the vehicle, you can press and hold that boost and you'll still be able to uh, start the vehicle off of your house batteries. Your rear auxiliary heater. So I'll show you that once we get there, but basically there's just a little um, trigger in the back that you're gonna pull and that'll allow your radiator coolant to run to the back of the unit run a little heater that's back there and heat things up from the back front as well as of course having the heat in the front to kind of meet in the middle. Uh, mirror defrost and cockpit fans. So the cockpit fans of course just right up here. All right. And then down the side there it's pretty straightforward. All right. Down here right beside the driver. So you've just got your uh, hydraulic leveling controls. So with these two front or these two exterior knobs there, if you have them in, that's gonna bring, that's gonna store all of your levelers. They'll come up, tuck into the unit. Once you're ready to put them back down, you're gonna slip those guys out. And then you're just gonna take that hydraulic guy and push it forward. And that'll just kind of extend whichever set of legs you're pointing towards, all right? And the power switch just on the side right there, all right? So we're just leaving that as is for now. All right, this couch here, does have seat belts in a couple of the spots so again occupiable little lights just on their own center switches there push buttons just off to the side of these two lights inside here all right storage across the top this light switch up on the wall here does your dinette g5 protected outlet there resets in the bathroom we'll get to there in a second So down here, you do have these little slide out stops. So basically you'd just be extending them 
with the slide out closed, you'd be extending them so that these are just kind of pushing on the slide, ensuring that it can't go falling out on you while traveling. Lights, again, sorry, just on their own center switches there. Just watch that one burn out. So for your kitchen, you get the microwave. It's pretty straightforward, just like home. Below that, we got your range hood. So you just got that fan here. So low and high. So of course, propane stove, whenever you're using it, is putting off fumes. So you just wanna make sure that this fan is turned on, evacuating sub fumes. Get the light here as well. Five fold cover just flips on back, falls into place. Take the knob over to light, hit it with a sparker, and she fires right up. Right. Once we're done, just turning it back off. Taking that cover up and forward, falls into place. Now for your stove, you're just going to turn this knob over to pilot, push and hold, grab a lighter, and then right in the back there, as soon as it clears all the air out of the lines, you can see that pilot light's now going. And then we can just turn up to the desired temperature and she fires right up. All right. Once we're done, we can turn it back down to pilot. It'll hold just the pilot light for you. However, if you're going traveling or leaving the trailer for a while, you want to make sure that guy's right off. All right. So then straight down below that, we just got your converter here. So just get this one little pin there. Just kind of turn that off to the side, unlocks so it, you can open it up. Got all of your breakers in the center here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. And then on the side here, you got all of your fuses. Close that back up, lock it back into place. Down beside that, we've got your LP detector. So propane's heavier than air. It'll sit on the floor. This guy detects it and starts going off just like your smoke detector would. Then you just got all the storage here. As well as below your sink. sink of course with hot and cold water with a light right above it as well right. a little bit more storage above so you do get that power outlet in the top there if that is for your microwave right. so that big binder right there is your owner's manuals anything with to do with the unit is going to be found in that all right and then your fridge here so freshly installed i do have your controls just on the top here so on all right with that button on the right here in, that's running on auto. So it's first gonna run off of AC power. If AC power is then lost or taken away, it's gonna automatically flip over to running on gas. And if you're looking to run it solely off of gas, you can have that button on the right come out and that'll run just on gas. If you get that little check light there, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, you'll just be turning it off and back on to reset it. All right. Bridge below it. So your temperature control is just done with that slider there. The higher up it goes, the colder you'll get. Below that isn't really storage. It's more just access to your hot water heater. So very clearly labeled here with it the way it currently is. That's normal flow. Flip it the other way, that's bypass. Low point drains are just back here. So you just pop those valves open, drain out your water lines. Purpose of that being is if you're leaving the trailer for a while, or if you're winterizing it, you don't want your water going stale or stagnant. You just drain it all out first. This here I fought with forever because I thought it was a pranchy. Press that button and it slides out. And it's actually a really nice storage. Right. Slides back away and locks into place. All right, bunch more storage here. Kind of your closet space. Right. Bit more storage below. Right here we've also got the return air for your furnace. So you just want to make sure that's not getting blocked off by anything. Your pocket doors, we put these little latches onto, so you can slide that. All right, and once you're done, just click it back shut, and there you go. For the shower, you do just have that travel latch, so just turn it down out of the way, open her up, standard head and hose. As well as up here, you get that little light, so just slide that switch over, and there you go. And then this little light switch down here turns on your lights above your medicine cabinet and the medicine cabinet itself right here. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course, a little bit of storage below. So here we've got your GFR protected outlet. So test on the left, reset on the right. So this one is separate from the one that was outside. Right here, you've got your bathroom, so your actual toilet. So your light switch is just up on the wall there. The toilet with a little bit of storage behind it. Above that, we've got a roof vent, so just turn that knob to open it up. And then in the back, you get that little switch, turns on that fan.
Okay, now up into the bedroom here. So the same sort of legs here again. You just pick up the foot of your bed, you get access to your fresh water tank, as well as this little heater that I was talking about from up front. So you're basically you're just going to pull that trigger right there, and that'll activate this heater, allowing the coolant from the bus to then come through and give us some heat out of here, which is actually really nice compared to having just the furnace, all right? There's this little valve right here. So if we open that up, that's a fresh water tank drain. Drains out the fresh water tank. There you go. Water pumps here as well. Also, if you're looking to winterize the unit, you do have your winterizing hose already attached and installed. Right. So back here, pretty straightforward. You just get your couple of lights at the head. Same thing over here. Press that little button there. Turns on your radio. Turns off the radio. There you go. A little bit of storage across the back. And then right above our heads here, we've got the air conditioner. So fairly straightforward. You just got this one little knob there, turn it over to fan low, runs it just on the low fan, medium and high. And then you get over into the cooling side and that'll actually start cooling, right? So you can see just that little dot right there is actually your indicator. Right, so you can go to low, medium, high with your cooling and that's that. Optional heat, again, not there. Right, just turn that off. And then this right here is just kind of your temperature selection. So just as cold as possible. And that's that. Again, you do need your second cord plugged in for that AC to work though. Right. You also have the TV up on the side here. And that's about it. Right. So if you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call. 204-237-7272.